What's up everybody, it's AJ with eTrailer.com. Today we're gonna to be checking out this Fulton XLT bolt-on swivel jack. It's gonna be a good replacement for an existing jack you have on your trailer. Maybe it's rusted out, maybe it doesn't have a wheel on it, or just hard to crank to get that to raise or lower to wherever you wanna go hook it up to. It's gonna be heavy duty. You got the wheel on there, so now you don't always have to hook up your trailer. If you just need to move it a little bit forward, you can with that wheel. Hook it up to your vehicle that way, or if you just need to move it around your garage and get it out of the way to pull something else in, you can easily do that. Let's check it out. By the way, I want to show you what was most impressive about the jack is just how easy it is to raise and lower. So for every five turns, I can move it an inch. And that's pretty quick, especially for a hand crank one. This is faster than some of the automatic ones that we've installed and used. I'm going to show you how quick and easy it is just to raise and lower it. I don't have to work really hard at turning the crank or anything. It works really well. Something else that really helps it out is that it is a sidewinder. So what that means is the crank's gonna be on the side of the jack instead of up top. And that just makes it easier and works with a bunch of more different kind of trailers because the top winders, if you have a toolbox that's in the way, if this was a top winder, it would probably be in the way. You wouldn't be able to fully turn here or here, it would hit this. So the side makes it so much easier to install on trailers. The other thing is, this one actually has a catch on it too, or a stopper. You can fold this out, this plastic piece, and it keeps the handle in place. Now that might not seem that impressive, but when working with a bunch of different jacks, you go to push this around or move it when the jack is up, that handle's gonna keep spinning and moving. If you can't swivel it up like this one out of the way, or you leave it down, this handle's just gonna go crazy. And that's just kind of annoying. It's nice to have that stop, so now when I pull it forward, or push it back, the handle's not gonna move no matter where we're putting it. Another great feature it has is it swings upwards. So we can pull on this pin here, pull it out, and it gets up and out of the way when you're hooked up to your vehicle. Now we have it at jack stand right now, but we just wanted to show you this feature because it's pretty awesome. You don't have to get it cranked all the way back up every time so that the wheel's not touching the ground when you're traveling. You just easily fold it up and out of the way when it's attached. You don't have to worry about any road damage or anything like that. While we have it up in the air, I just want to show you how maneuverable the wheel is. It spins 360 degrees, no problem. You can spin it either way here. And that's just good because it gives you that more maneuverability for your trailer. You know, sometimes those wheels only go one way and have limited movement. So it's kind of a pain to, you know, when you're pushing it from one side, it'll skip or something like this. This one fully moves all the way around so you can always maneuver it where you need it to be. You also have three Zerk fittings. You got two up top, one down here, which is good because that way you can maintain the jack and keep it working as best as it can for longer. If you feel like this handle's not quite turning like it should, you can add some grease in there and that's gonna help that out. And the same thing goes for the wheel at the bottom just to keep it spinning easily so you can maneuver this trailer. Overall, it has a very solid steel construction. It's gonna be heavy duty. It's got a coating on it so it does have a little bit of a texture feel to it. It's gonna hold up just fine to those elements whether you hold it or store it inside or outside. The elements aren't gonna bother it at all. It's made to last like that. The handle also has a nice rubber grip on it, and I think that also helps when you're going to use that handle. It's not just a plastic sleeve that goes over there that like barely turns. This one's a nice grip that rotates, so you don't have to change your grip or anything. You can just easily raise or lower it very easily. The wheel itself is also a very dense plastic, so you don't have to worry about being cheap plastic and it not lasting or it getting degraded when you like you know, drag it across the driveway or concrete, it's not gonna scrape it up, it's not gonna break it down. It's pretty dense and heavy duty when we went to go put it on there. Now, and that all adds up to make sure that it holds a weight capacity or a lift capacity of 1,500 pounds. Now let's get some measurements real quick. We got it in its highest position right now. I'm gonna measure from the center of the bracket here to the bottom. And it looks to be 25 inches from the ground right here in the middle, so that's gonna be the highest it can go. The lowest it can go is gonna be 15 inches, so that gives you 10 inches of lift in total with this jack. It fits trailer frames up to three by three or three by four. Also comes with all the hardware you need to install it, and it wasn't that bad to install. It was pretty quick and easy. It's just some bolts and some nuts and some brackets. Follow along with us and see how we did it. I've set it all out on the table so we can do a little bit of pre-assembly. It's just gonna help the install be a little bit easier. 
So what we're going to ultimately do is set our jack on one side of the frame of the boat trailer and then we'll put our plates on the other side. You want the hole that's a little bit separated from the other ones to be on top. So you're going to line this up like that and we'll run our bolts through now. So I'm going to run this through in the top. Set this on there, make sure the flat side's going to be against the trailer. And then install the nut. And that's just to keep it in place. That way I have both of these installed. I can set this down on the trailer and it'll sit there while I go and put the other bolts in. It just makes it easier than trying to hold it and do it at the same time. Let's get that started. Now it's gonna sit on the trailer frame. Back at the trailer, we're gonna go ahead and just set it over the tongue. These are gonna help you keep it in place. And we'll line up our second hole here is gonna be close to the trailer. So we'll use that one. Feed in the other side. I'm going to repeat this on the other side. So now that it's on the tongue of the trailer, we're just going to use the top two bolts like we got set up and then the bottom two ones as well. So the bottom one on the jack and it's going to be the second to last hole on the bracket. I can just get that lined up, push it through like that and then install our hardware from there. I'm just going to come back with our impact and our wrench and getting it tightened down. It's going to do a little bit at a time, that way it all stays aligned. You don't want to fully tighten that one before all the rest. Now we're ready to install our caster wheel. So first off, we're going to put the sleeve in the center of the wheel. Get that lined up and then bring it up here and line the holes up with these. You might have to give it a little bit more of a push than you think just to get it through there. But you can see the threads and we'll get it started. There we go. We'll come back with a ratchet and a wrench. Because I don't want to use an impact. I don't think we need to tighten up that much. We want the wheel to be able to turn still. Looks like there's plenty of room on each side for the wheel. So I'm going to tighten down a little bit more, try and get a few threads out of here, but I don't want to pinch these metal parts onto the wheel because then it won't turn freely. So that's what you're looking to not do. The wheel still got movement back and forth so I can get a couple more turns out of it, but then I think we're good. When I was talking about the pinching, this is what I was talking about. You see the space in between the wheel on both sides, you definitely don't want to tighten it down to where that's touching. Finally, we're going to install our handle. So you're going to put the nut in this side. There's a cutout for it in the handle, so it just slides into place there. And then start threading the bolt that comes in the handle here with the sleeve onto that nut. Just want to get it started, and I'll come back and tighten it down further. Now I'm just going to use my finger to push the nut in on this side, since it's a cutout, it's going to hold it in place so you don't have to use a wrench on this side. And then use this ratchet just to tighten it down a little bit. Again, you don't want to do too much, but enough to keep the handle nice and sturdy. That feels about right, right there. And with that done, we can lower this jack and remove the floor jack. That's all there really is to the jack. I mean, it works really well. I was impressed by it. Installing it was really easy. And then even turning that handle, it just feels heavy duty. It feels like it's gonna last. And I appreciate that. I'm glad that I only have to buy this one time, throw it on my boat trailer, and I'm good to go. Well, I think that about does it. Thanks for hanging out, and I hope this helped.